Problem 19. For any positive integer m, the notation m factorial denotes the product of the integers from 1 through m, obviously, because that's a factorial. What is the largest integer n, for which 5 to the n is a factor of the sum of 98 factorial plus 99 factorial plus 100 factorial? Well, when you see a factorial sum like that, the first red flag is to factor, because 98 factorial, right, is 1 plus 99 plus 100 times 99. The reason why for this is remember n factorial is equal to n times n plus 1 factorial, which is equal to n times n plus 1 times, or, uh, sorry, 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 n minus 1, right, n minus 1 times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. That's the formula, so that's what we used, but the other way around. So, with, so like, this is basically the, the dissection of factorials, and we just did it for this one, and after you do this, what can we say? We can say this is 98 factorial times 100, plus 9900, zero, zero. and that must be equal to 98 factorial times 1000. Zero, 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 zero. So that's the thing. So basically what we're trying to find here is 5 to the n. Basically, what is the, from here, how do you factorize the largest power of 5 from this term? Well, to do that, we can factorize each term separately. Let's first factorize 5s out of 10,000. Well, 10,000, right, is obviously equal to what? We have 1, 2, 3, we have four zeros, so that's 10 to the 4. The formula here is, is that if I have n zeros, right, n zeros, that term is will be equal to 10 to the n. Take 100, for example, I have two twos, so that's equal to 10 squared. So from the same logic, 10,000 must be 10 to the 4. Now, what is 10 equal to? 10 is 2 times 5 to the 4, which is equal to 2 to the 4 times 5 to the 4. All right, we have our first 5 to the 4 here, so we can put that to the side. But don't forget, this is not our final answer because we can still factor out 5 from here. So how do we do that? Well, 98 factorial is equal to what? 98 times 97 times all the terms until 1. So from this series, how many of them are multiples of 5? Well, to do that, we know that 1, right, 5 is one of them, then it's 10, then it's 15, then it's 20. These terms must be all included within this series, because remember, it's the product of all numbers from 1 to 98. So 5, 10, 15, and 20, for example, are within the range of 1 to 98. Therefore, they must contribute to factors of 5 to the n. Therefore, let's find all such numbers within the series. Well, this goes all, this is 5 times 1 times, this is 5, oh, so this is 10, right? So this is, this is 5 times 1, this is 5 times 2, this is 5 times 3, this is 5 times 4, all the way to 5 times n. What is this n? Well, we could do 98 divided by 5 to give 1, 5, 48, 9. Because 19 times 5 would give us what? That would give us 95. And that obviously would be the um, the, the uh, smallest or the largest um, multiple of 5 that's within this boundary. That's a closed interval. So therefore, we have the terms of 5, 10, 15, all the way until 95. And this is when it's 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, all the way until 5 times what? 5 times 19. So in other words, we had 19 fives to contribute, right? Because why? This is, so times 1, right, indicates 1 5. But then times 2, we have 2 fives. Times 3, we have 3 fives. So the number of fives corresponds to the term that you're multiplying 5 with. So logically, it must be 19. So we have 19 fives coming from 98 factorial, but are we actually done yet? Because, and this is combined with 5 to the 4. The reason why we're not done yet is because think about 5 times 5, right? This 5 here just symbolizes, so 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, 5 times 4, 5 times 5. How many 5s do we have here within this simple series? Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 according to the way we counted previously. But in reality, we have 6. Right? Because 25, right, contributes two fives. It doesn't just contribute one five. So that means this this um this term right here actually does not completely represent the number of fives that we have. Because for every multiple of five that is also a five, so like five times five to the first, five times five squared, and etc., we are contributing more than one five. We're contributing multiple fives. But how do we know how many of such terms exist? Well, such terms exist only when we have a 25 multiple, right? Because 25 multiple is equal to 5 squared. 5 squared times n means I'm contributing an extra 5 into the original term that I already had. So therefore, if we find the total number of multiples of 5, then that will contribute to all the uncounted 5s that were unaccounted for in the first time that we counted it. So therefore, 25 times 1 gives 25. 25 times 2 gives 50. How many 25s do we have? 
Well, 98 divided by 25, we'll put a 3 here. So 25 times 3 will give me 75. What is 25 times 4? That's equal to 100. That is obviously too large, so therefore I have 3 uncounted 5s. So we must multiply this final result of 5 to the 3. I'll do it in red um, right here. So what is the product of all of this? And that's our final answer, because this attributes to all the fives that can be factored out, which is what we want. So the product of these numbers, since they have the same base, is the sum of the exponents. So what is 19 plus 4 plus 3? Well, that's equal to 26. Therefore, your final answer must be answer choice D.